Unbelievable. I mean, that is unbelievable, as you said. Kyrie Irving. The deal went down since we have last spoken. Uh, I think we were all taken by surprise that it was the Mavericks and the return. Just look, uh, you know that he has requested a trade, but you figure this is something that's going to drag out until the trade deadline. We had talked about the Mavericks. We talked about the Lakers. We talked about some other teams um, as possible Kyrie destinations. But it becomes official as of our recording on Monday night. Uh, Kyrie Irving to the Mavs for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, 2029 first-round pick, and two second-round picks, one in 2027 and one in 2029. All right, it is official. Kyrie Irving is a Dallas Maverick. So uh, first things first. What do you think when you saw the deal, the return, and started thinking about Kyrie as a Maverick? My main thought for the from the Dallas side of things is increases their ceiling now, increases the potential of this all imploding, and Luca at some point over the next three four years demanding a trade, and Dallas going to the toilet at the bottom of the league in the NBA. So I think for you know for years now, it, people around the NBA have talked about Luca as a threat to go to a Miami or a New York or an LA, a big market. That definitely increases the risk of that. However, if you're the Mavericks at this point, dealing for Kyrie Irving as risky as it might be, as desperate as it might feel, despite the fact he's blown up the Nets, the Celtics, and the Cavs as he's walked out the door and it's been ugly and he quit on his teammates in Boston and he didn't talk to his teammates for three weeks in Cleveland during the playoffs and he abruptly demanded a trade here with the Nets. Despite all that, he is a brilliant offensive player. And on paper, him and Luka together, they're going to be really hard to stop. But the big question here, though, Chris, is Kyrie has never played with somebody. He played with KD. He played with Tatum in Boston. He played with LeBron. He's never played with somebody that's had the usage of Luka. Luka is at a different stratosphere. 39% usage percentage is on another level from all of those other superstars. So Luka, he's going to have to sacrifice more than ever before to accommodate Kyrie Irving at the level he was performing with Brooklyn. But Kyrie also may have to sacrifice more than ever before, too. So I'm, I'm going to be fascinated to see the chemistry of these two guys because on paper, they could be brilliant offensively. But, like, will it work actually in practice? That's my big question here. I, I got to be honest. My concerns are not basketball ones, honestly, when it comes to Luka and Kyrie. Because Is it everything else they, I said? It's all that yeah. other stuff? Because of the way they play, and Kyrie was a great fit with LeBron. And in that way, I could see it working with Luka. The idea that Luka is able to, much like LeBron did once upon a time, be able to take possessions off, be able to rest a little bit more on the bench, uh, have someone else initiate the offense. Um for maybe several possessions in a row, or maybe he's able to sit out a game that they don't lose now because they're (laughs) 0-7 every time he doesn't play. Um, And he's a great shooter. This guy is a shot maker. And so playing off, uh, playing off the ball, uh, this guy can, he's a a great, great one to throw it out to and be able to knock down shots. And Luka creates open shots for guys, much like LeBron does. I mean, I could see it being a really good basketball fit offensively and that they would be dynamite offensively. But don't you agree the, sa- the sacrifice? Don't you agree there, though, with the sacrifice Yeah, but he's going to, he has to. It's unsustainable, Kevin. You can't have a Luka. 38.5, yeah, usage Luka needs rate. To. Yeah, that's not, you're not going to be able to win like that. You're just not. He's going to gas out completely. I mean, this whether it's Kyrie or somebody else, that was a problem that had to be solved. Yeah, but did he do it with Brunson? I mean, 
Look. Not really. Not really. Well, that's he was one, that's out. one of the he was, that's one he was of the out reasons for a lot why, of the playoffs games too. I, I know, but that's one of the reasons why Dallas didn't pay Brunson is because they're like, well, I mean, can we really pay him considering the usage he has next to Luca? The answer was for them, no, right or wrong. Well, look, Brunson in their mind, and he's a guy that they didn't even give sixty million dollars to. He was a second round pick for that team. In retrospect, total catastrophe that led them to this point. Yeah, but. But he is not nearly and was not nearly as accomplished as this guy. Not at all. So no. <laughs> it's a different deal. And I do think that, you know, Luca getting help offensively. My, my concerns are all off the court stuff. It's locker room stuff. It's off the court stuff. It's all the stuff that you mentioned with you, you just don't know. It's not a guy that you've been able to count on. Can't and trust so them. it's Yeah. I mean, it's like you can watch a hot girl get married, divorced, and burned down the house three different times, but there's somebody that's like, you know, she's hot. <laughs> you know, it, it's Kyrie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Which is, for, it, really, it really is Kyrie there. It is. <laughs> you know, it's the like, truth. Didn't you, see, didn't you see her? Like, didn't you, didn't you see her run out on everybody and burn their house down? Like, yeah, I saw it, but man, she's hot. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the deal here. And Kyrie's Kyrie, one of the Kyrie's one of the hottest scorers of all time. There's no I mean, question. He's unbelievable. Tantalizing, yeah, tantalizing talent. <laughs> I I could not believe I saw um, our buddy Tom Haberstro posted like the finale of Kyrie Irving's time in Brooklyn. Kyrie Irving played in 143 of 278 regular season games of his Brooklyn Nets tenure. 51% of games. Wow. Barely half. KD and Kyrie played 74 of a possible 206 after KD returned from an Achilles injury. KD... Kyrie and Harden played 10 games. KD, Kyrie, and Simmons played 24 games. Unbelievable. I mean, that is unbelievable, as you said. I I don't know what my guess would have been as to how many games KD, Kyrie, and Harden played together, but it wouldn't have been 10. And I don't know what my guess would have been on KD, Kyrie, and Simmons, but it wouldn't have been 24. I would have been over on both of those. And I sure wouldn't have said 74 of 206 games since KD came back from the Achilles. They only played 74 games since KD's come back? Crazy to think about in the in that context. And so... I mean, Unfulfilled well, I, potential, Chris. Unfulfilled. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that whole the whole Brooklyn thing obviously is going to be remembered as uh, a huge what if, um, in many different ways. That being said, Dallas wasn't going anywhere with their team, Kevin. I, you know, it's a risk, and it's a big risk, and it's something that you and I talked about a couple of weeks ago. And this was not in reference to maybe a Kyrie move. This was in reference to a Mark Cuban move. And we kind of talked about how sore he got over that mural, the Get Luca Hell oh, yeah, yeah, mural yeah. and contacting the artist and everything. And and then snapping back when Tim McMahon like wrote this highly very, respected Tim McMahon. Yeah, but, but Tim McMahon wrote this like very non controversial Luca, you know, has nudged people that he would like help. And it's like, I don't know. It's it's kind of like, it felt like they're so sore about the Brunson thing and so sensitive about the idea of Luca and them not building around him properly that now this is this is what you get. It's like, all right, now that's a big risk that they're taking. And it is kind of funny. We do this with every 
every team he goes to. When I'm reading the quotes from Jason Kidd tonight, we have a relationship. He's all about basketball. He wants to win. He wants to be coached. This is a great opportunity for me, <laughs> like all this stuff. You know, oh, Kyrie went to his, you know, was a huge fan of him growing up and wanted to go to his Hall of Fame induction and was able to secure a ticket. And it's like, and then he's got this great relationship with Nico, uh, who was with Nike when he was there. And Nico's buddies with the stepmom. And it's like, everything's always peachy at the beginning, right? Always. It's, it's peachy in the middle, too. We're never worried at the beginning. Chris, it's always peachy in the middle, too. Yeah. Said he's going to re-sign in Cleveland. He's not leaving Cleveland, not leaving yep. Boston, not leaving Brooklyn. Here we are. He's in Dallas. 